sniper's bullets in Beirut, it's the result of months of careful treatment at the Stoke Mandeville Hospital in Buckinghamshire. They may be crippled for life, but the two brave boys from Beirut are having fun. They're learning to enjoy life again, smiling happily now, proud to show the remarkable progress they've made. How different, though, it all was just three months ago, when seven-year-old Bilal was rescued from the Borj al barajni refugee camp in Beirut. Dr. Pauline Cutting saved his life after he was shot and paralyzed by gunmen besieging the camp. She was determined that Bilal and Samir, age nine, who received a similar injury, should get the best treatment in the world. Confused and bewildered, they arrived at the Stoke Mandeville Hospital in Buckinghamshire. Since then, their health has improved rapidly. They've been fitted with calipers for support, and upright in their mobile frames, they're now learning to walk again, trying to forget the horrors of Beirut. I think the loving and the care which they have been given uh, is overwhelming. At present, they don't think of that. This is great, really. But I'm sure when uh, the time comes when they had to go back home, this is when they will realize much more than what has happened to them and the price they have paid. Both boys have shown great courage during their treatment. They'll always need crutches or a frame to get about, but they should be leaving hospital soon. They're learning English to sing Michael Jackson's songs and to express their gratitude to the television personality whose campaign has paid for their treatment. Me love, me love Jimmy Me love, I love for Jimmy Sapphire. My, my. Christopher Morris reporting. And tonight's main news again. For the first time since the atomic age began, the United States and the Soviet Union have agreed to cut back nuclear weapons. Mr. Schultz and Mr. Shevardnadze have reached agreement on scrapping all medium and shorter range missiles. And a year after the Reykjavik summit broke down, President Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev will meet to sign the treaty that will make history. And that's the national and international news tonight. Good night. Good night. And now the regional news from the West. Good evening. A Swindon man has been jailed for a total of five years for the manslaughter of a pensioner. Bristol Crown Court heard that 60-year-old Barney Sheridan from Chester Street in Swindon was stabbed through the heart by Patrick Curran when he tried to stop Curran fighting with another man. Avon County Council is trying to arrange an early meeting of governors from Down End Comprehensive School near Bristol to sort out a dispute over shorter lunch breaks. For the second day running, pupils at the school walked out in protest at industrial action by their teachers, and today they padlocked the school gates. Twenty-five teachers are refusing to accept a 30-minute lunch break, which they say was introduced without consultation. A Bristol schoolboy who was left paralysed after an accident playing rugby is to sue Avon County Council for damages of at least a quarter of a million pounds. 20-year-old John Nutman from Hawfield, who broke his neck during a game of rugby at Monks Park School three years ago, is to sue the council for allowing him to play rugby at one of its schools without being properly insured. Thames Valley Police Authority has rejected a motion calling for a restriction of firearm certificates in the wake of the Hungerford Massacre. Before the start of today's meeting, members of the authority stood for a minute's silence in memory of those killed by gunman Michael Ryan. Bristol's largest bus operator, CityLine, is now an independent company. It was previously owned by the National Bus Company, but has been bought by CityLine management team in cooperation with Midland Red Bus Company, who operate in the West. The new owners hope to expand services in Bristol. Finally, the BBC has announced new local radio stations for our region. From next year, Taunton, which is currently covered by Radio Bristol, will have its own substation. Radio Gloucestershire is due to open next autumn, and two months later, BBC Wiltshire Sound will go on the air with studios in Swindon and Trowbridge. More regional news with full sports results tomorrow at 5.15. Now, the weather. Good evening to you. A lovely day today over most parts of the country, but unfortunately, with the weekend upon us, it isn't going to last. Today we have that area of high pressure, hence the fine weather, but already frontal systems are brewing up out here to the west and to the southwest. They're heading our way and are going to bring cloud and rain to many parts of the country. Here's the area of high pressure at the moment and hardly an isobar to be seen across the British Isles, so there are light winds everywhere. But just watch the way that area of high pressure whistles away onto the continent and round about this time tomorrow or by tomorrow evening, 
Instead of high pressure, we have low pressure on the scene, and not only low pressure, but a good deal of rain as well, more particularly in the northernmost parts of the country. Now, on the satellite picture, you can see what's happening. A lot of cloud to the west of us, a lot of cloud to the southwest. That's all sort of getting together and heading our way. Unsettled, you'll notice, over Scandinavia as well, but we'll uh, look at the European scene in a minute. As far as this country is concerned, we've had some bursts of rain already in uh, Cornwall and the Channel Islands, and I think as the night goes on, many of these western parts will become increasingly cloudy. By the end of the night, too, a bit of rain showing up in western Scotland and Northern Ireland, but clear skies in most central and eastern parts, and that means to say it's going to end up a jolly chilly night uh, with a ground frost in a good number of places. Now, tomorrow morning, these western parts becoming more and more cloudy, bits and pieces of rain around, and I think uh, that rain tending to become more persistent breaking out in a good number of places and by the afternoon there could well be outbreaks of rain just about scattered over the whole country and in some northern parts that rain turning out to be fairly heavy. Southeastern areas may well get away with it and the cloud there breaking for a while, brightening up in the afternoon, but I think as that happens we may well find some quite heavy thundery showers breaking out. Fog lapping onto these western and southern coasts as well for time to time. Gentle southerly breezes, so that's good news for the Spastics balloon race tomorrow. Temperatures, well, not really, but very brilliant. Uh, where it's uh, turning out to be quite wet, 16 Celsius, 61 Fahrenheit, but where it brightens up in the southeast, a pleasant 21 Celsius, but that's probably not until quite late in the day, and it'll end up a fairly humid uh, evening as well. As for the continent, well, if you're heading to the Mediterranean, you're really lucky. Dry in the southern part of Europe, a lot of sunshine, lovely weather indeed. One or two thunderstorms nearby tomorrow on the continent, stretching down into the Alps, Scandinavia, as you notice, very unsettled. By Sunday, southern parts of Britain will be cheering up, but the north still pretty unsettled. And uh, the unsettled weather that we've had working its way across into Germany, parts of Denmark as well. As for temperatures, very nice indeed in most places, but cool over Scandinavia. On BBC Two now, Peter Ustinov in a brand new series presents his own personal views of Russia and its history. Here on One in a Moment, Miss Marple. Electrifying entertainment on BBC One for Saturday. At 5.45, it's Noel Edmonds. On Telly Addicts, we've got action, suspense, comedy, romance, drama, comfy chairs, thick pile carpet. It's so good, it makes you want to go... <laughs> At 6.15, more plotting in Allo Allo. We could give to Monsieur Alphonse purged money. It is deceitful and underhand. It is a good plan. <laughs> at 6.50, Bob's Full House. Then at 7.25, The Russ Abbott Show. Why do you keep calling me Indy? Because that's your name, Indiana Jones. I'm Idaho Jones. Call me Ida. At 7.55, Casualty and more drama for the night shift. Busy. Uh, the old plague and famine, nothing we can't handle. At 9, Saturday night at the movies with A Bridge Too Far, a star-studded cast and spectacular action. I can talk. I'm Minister for Overseas Development. <laughs> and with Championship Darts at 12.20, this is Saturday Night Entertainment on BBC One. At 10.25 this evening, we start a brand new series welcoming back Omnibus, which begins by looking at the life and work of a man who's achieved a status far beyond that of a pop superstar, Bob Dylan. First, there's an appointment to be kept with Agatha Christie's Miss Marple, en route to another baffling mystery at Bertram's Hotel. Mm -hmm. 